everybody. My name is Christian and welcome to my hobby blog. Today we're doing something a little different. Today we are going through my r slash fantasies book bingo sheet that I just finished up last week. The final book I read for my bingo squares was getting in the ninth. So if you haven't watched that review yet, go ahead and check it out and let me know what you think. So, basically how we're going to do this is this is my tier list that I made. I was too lazy to use the actual one because it was asking me to create an account and, you know, use my Twitter and doing all this stuff and I didn't want to do that. So I just made a simple Microsoft Word tier list. So, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in order of the books I read and which bingo squares that I finished. So, let's get started. The first one that I finished was the books featuring a setting with snow, ice, or cold. The book that I read for this was Tad Williams, Stone of Farewell. This is the second book in the Memory Sour Thorn trilogy. Technically a quadrology as they had to split the last book because it was really long and each book ended up being 800 pages on the last two, so that's, it depends how you call it, but I really enjoyed this book. This was leagues better than the first one, in my opinion, a lot more character based. The characters were a lot more involved in the events of the story. So I, I just put it in B right now so I can show you what the cover looks like. It's a little... Uh, small, so I'm going to increase it just a bit. But now it's all over the place in terms of my capture screen. So, I'm going to... I think I'm going to keep it in the B. Because I really enjoyed it, but I really liked book three. That one goes up maybe to the A tier, book two, so... Or book one, I mean. Book two stays in the B tier. And I read that from April 11th to the 20th of 2020. The next book that I read was lent by a friend of mine. He wanted me to read this. And, you know, this is the Star Wars Outbound Flight by Timothy Zahn. This is the prequel to the Thrawn trilogy. Thrawn is... An antagonist of the Star Wars universe after the events of Return of the Jedi, so it was interesting for me at least to see the events afterwards. But this one is a prequel, so this takes place during the prequel series, I believe. It's about 20 to 30 years before the uh, Return of the Jedi, so I'm gonna put it in. the C tier because it was okay but I just I don't really care for Star Wars in the first place and so I I just read it because it was recommended and I enjoyed it I mean it wasn't boring but you know I think if I was a, an actual Star Wars fan I would enjoy it so if you like Star Wars you should definitely check this out and that uh, bingo square was the Big Dumb Object square. So, the Big Dumb Object in this book was the, uh, the big spaceship that is using... That has been actively used as a research facility. And then it picks up a foreign uh, spaceship and everything begins from there on. So the next bingo square that I finished was the five sci-fi or fantasy short stories. And... Yeah, okay. So this one was an obvious one for me to do. And it was The Sword of Destiny by Andrzej Sapowski. I believe that's how you say his first name. So that one is the first of the short story collection in the Witcher series. Uh, Netflix just recently started making the TV show. Season 1 came out last year. 
And after I watched the TV show, I read these first books. The first two short story collections. I was never really a fan of the video games. I've tried to play it multiple times, but it never... I just never got into it. The combat system was just not for me. So, for the book, I'm going to put it in the A tier. I really like this one. I want to reread it again once I go through the whole series. I just recently picked up book one. Blood of Elves, I believe it's called. So, I'm going to be doing more uh, of this series. So, I'm really excited to go into it. So the next, I'm just trying to read, do my thing. So just, just real quick, I uh, I read Star Wars Outbound Flight from May 15th to the 19th. So it took me four days to finish. So it was decently paced, that's my point. And then I read The Sword of Destiny uh, from July 9th to the 11th. So in two days I read it. And I really enjoyed it. So this next bingo square that I did... I actually replaced it. There's a choice to, uh, one of the rules is that you can uh, switch out a bingo space for a former bingo space from a different year, such as 2020 or 2019. This one, I substituted it with uh, a 2019 bingo space. So the one I that got replaced was the graphic novel or audiobook. I don't do either of those, so I switched that out with 2019's Second Chance Bingo Square. What this is, is basically what it sounds like. It's the book that you read that you couldn't finish. And so you put it down, waited a few years, and then you gave it a second chance. This one was Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. This is book one of The Wheel of Time. Which is now one of my favorite series now, so this should give you an idea of what I thought of the book. But at the same time, it shouldn't, because I really did not like Eye of the World. I thought it was really boring, derivative, even though I know that's the whole point, so I try not to give it too much flack for that. And so, I'm putting it in the C tier, just because I... The pacing was really slow. I didn't know anybody, so I wasn't invested yet. But now that I'm on, I just recently finished book five, I can say that this will probably climb up real high into the tier list once I actually finish the series. I get all the payoffs and all that. So I will say the prologue is one of my favorite chapters ever. So it has that going for it. Now I read that from July 24th to the 31st. The next book is Climate Fiction. That was the bingo space. This one is an obvious one. A lot of people chose this for this bingo square. I've seen it everywhere. It is D Frank Herbert's Dune. This one is a masterpiece of sci-fi, but it is not a book for me. I recognize why everybody likes it. I don't care for it personally. I've seen the 1980s movie. I'm excited for the new one coming out, but I just did not care for the. I I enjoyed reading it. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't for me. So I wish uh, Jodorowsky had his chance to make his 10-hour movie based on the book. So I think that would have been something really special. But the book itself is. I really like the uh, climax of the book and everything going on with our main character, but there wasn't much else to enjoy on my part. So I actually, it took me a while to read this. I read this from August 6th all the way to the 25th. And I'm going to put that in the C tier because I didn't hate it. It wasn't for me, but it was, you know. I, I'm, I'm saving the D tier for books that there was just nothing redeemable and I did not enjoy reading at all. So The next Bingo Square, no, book six that I've read for this challenge was Book About Books. 
So this one was a little tough for me to find a book on, but I finally uh, saw someone else's bingo sheet and they put Misery by Stephen King on. It's one of my favorite movies to watch. It's very tense. The lead acting is really good. There's two main characters, basically, the whole movie, and it's really interesting to see the relationship. And so I rented the book from the library and I read it for this. And I really like this book. I think I need to start reading Stephen King books I have no idea about because every book that I've read by Stephen King last year, such as Carrie, It, this book, and something else. I read, I've, I've read The Shining actually a couple of years ago. And the commonality between all these books is that I've known the story, I know all the characters before I read them. So I need to start reading like the Doc Tower or something like that. So I'm going to put this up with the Witcher short story clash. And I, uh, I'm going to put it below the Witcher short story collection because I don't think I'll ever read Misery again. It was really good, but once you've read it once, that's it. You don't really need to read it again. I read that book actually in one day on September 17th, so the next book is a book that everybody loves. It's part of the really long series that just recently wrapped up in 2013, I believe. And the bingo square that this book satisfied was Novel with Chapter Epigraphs. And this is The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I'm just going to go ahead and say I'm going to put it, that up on the A tier. I really like this book. It's book one of the whole El Realm of the Elderling series, which it isn't one series technically. It's multiple trilogies and quadrilogies running together in a uh, single world and country. So I want I am going to read on with the series. I really liked it. The character uh, of Fitz was really interesting to read from. It's in the first person Ned, first person perspective, which really helps it stay uh, immersing. So the language and the prose is really good too. So I'm really happy to have read this. I picked up the first trilogy for maybe four bucks for my local bookstore. So I said, okay, I'll get to the series now, I guess. And so I finally did. I'm really happy I did. I read that from see, October 11th to the 20th. The next bingo space that I did was a novel published in 2020. This one I did, I went the self-published route. I did a lot of self-published uh, reading last year, late last year. I would say from this book on, I was reading a lot of self-published books. This is uh, Flameborn by Jamel Cato. This, this is one of those cases where people say like sometimes self-publishing, self-published books are obviously self-published. And this fits right into that category for me because this is, the story is like a gritty Avatar The Last Airbender, which is one of my favorite TV shows. So this is why I was interested in the series, but the story just jumps around way too much. One of my main complaints was that each chapter is about two to four pages, and you're constantly changing perspectives. If, if it was more like how uh, Robert Jordan does it, now that I'm into that series, of how you can have multiple perspectives per chapter and kind of lengthen the chapters, it would have been much better. But for now, I'm just going to put it low, low C. If it'll let me. There it goes. Okay. So, I read that from October 15th to the 7th, 27th of 2020. The next one, again, is a self-published one because the bingo square is called self-published sci-fi or fantasy novel. 
This one, I loved this book. It is called The Dark Inheritance by Todd Hertzman. He released the book for free on Reddit one day for ebook. So I immediately downloaded it and I just so happened to finish up The uh, Flameborn by Jamel Cato and wanted to read more self-published because I thought there'd be a lot of potential in the format. So I read this one because it was free. So. And I can say that this is one of the best paced books I've read in the self-published genre or format, I guess. Because he keeps it really tight. He, uh, I was actually messaging him a couple months back about the series and how he got to writing it. And he's, he said it's a mix of being a gardener and an architect and that he had a lot of the major story beats going, but he wanted to give it a little bit more freedom. So each chapter switches over. So you don't get two chapters in a row with the same character. You jump between three different characters, all of whom are siblings in this world. And I really like this one. I'm going to put it in the high B, above Stone of Pharaoh, which is kind of amazing to think about how a self-published book can be even better, in my opinion, than a classic of the fantasy genre of Tad Williams. So, the next one was a self-published book and then got picked up by Orbit, I believe. Yes, Orbit. I'm looking at it on my shelf now. This one is a novel set in a school or university. It would have been really easy for me to have done Harry Potter, but I do not want to read it, read it again. And these books that I used for this Bingo Square, I got for my birthday. So it was really near my birthdays in October. So I had them on hand, basically. And I read them for a, for a book club that I was a part of. And so for this being a space, a novel set in a school or university, I used The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. So I'm going to go ahead and say that's a mm, low to mid B. Let's see if it goes. I want, it. I want it in the middle. Yeah. So, I really like this book, but it took a while for me to get interested in the events and the characters. It's very much a Wheel of Time, I guess, uh, descended book. It's I've seen uh, Wheel of Time light be described on this book, because it very much follows the same story structure as Wheel of Time, except it's not dragged out to 14 books. So you get a lot of plot advancement, character exploration, all of that. So I really like this book. I'm curious how the other rest of the series is. Apparently the last book is like near perfect, especially the ending. So I believe he was a student of Brandon Sanderson. So I'm a huge Brandon Sanderson fan. So. I'm excited to see that uh, there's another author who can perfectly wrap up stories. So, the next book that I'm going to explain or talk about is, the, is Black Flame by Will White. This was uh, the bingo space novel with a color in the title. So, Black Flame. This is book three, I believe, of the Cradle series. That's another self-published series. One of the top series ever on self-published. It's basically Dragon Ball Z in novel format. I really love it. I was a pretty big Dragon Ball Z fan growing up, so... To read a book that reads just like a Dragon Ball Z episode was wonderful. And each of the books are about 200 to 300 pages, so they're really fast and very well paced. And all the characters are lovable, 
the bad guys aren't awful, they're not just doing, you know, crimes against humanity, they're just, you know, out for themselves, and like that's the way the uh, antagonist antagonism comes from, so I'm gonna put that in the high B. I wish it was a little longer, but I mean, it's Cradle, it's a self-published series, it doesn't need to be Brandon Sanderson, George R. R. Martin length in order to be good. So I heavily recommend the Cradle series in general. Really good. So the next bingo space was the asexual slash aromatic speculative fiction. So basically a character who doesn't have sexual desires. Someone it has to have a character who's ace, so this one, Brandon Sanderson came out and specifically said one of the characters was ace, so for this space I'm using Brandon Sanderson's Rhythm of War. This was book four of the Stormlight Archives, it's one of my favorite series ever, I honestly thought the book was quite bloated, it was my only criticism of the book. I like most of the characters. I don't like Benly. I don't really like Lyft. And I don't I don't want to go into spoilers here, especially since it's book four, so even saying he's alive by this point is a spoiler. But I wanna say it's a pretty uh low to mid B. I I thought it could have been much better. I thought Brandon Sanderson could have tightened it up a bit. I was getting a little frustrated when I was on page 1000 and there was still 300 pages left. And I was like, okay, okay, let's, let's get it going, let's finish it. Navani, of course, is a huge highlight in this book. But I guess I'll just go out and say that the character who is ace is Yasna. I love her to death. And Brandon tried to write her as lesbian, but it... It did not work, and beta readers pointed that out, said, no, that doesn't work. She's ace. Like, so, he changed it to that, and it works way better. So, that's that. The next bingo square that I did was novel by a Canadian author. This one I kept changing, and this is about the time where I started actually looking at the bingo squares, and started actually tailoring my bingo squares to specific books. And this was the first one that I'd read already and I was kind of trying to shuffle it around. It originally was in the politics section, then it was in a different bingo square and I finally settled on it to be on the novel by a Canadian author. And that is The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. I really like this book. A lot of people love it. I don't. I thought there could have been more world building. But, I mean, it just got announced recently that it's going to be a four or five book series. So, I'm not bumping it down much for that. But I really like the action. I love the story. The characters they have a little bit more detail. But I still really enjoyed reading about them. So, I'm going to put it in... The high B. Question is where to put it in the B. Hmm. I definitely liked it more than Stone of Farewell and uh, Rhythm of War, but. Okay, I'm gonna put it in between Stone of Farewell and Shadow of What Was Lost. I am really excited to read the sequel, apparently it's bounds and bounds better, and it's already a really good book, so. We'll see how I feel after I read the sequel about this book. So, the next bingo square that I did was novel featuring politics. This one got shuffled around a lot. So I finally settled on The Lives of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch, book one of The Gentleman Bastards. 
everyone really hyped up this book. I wish it wasn't regarded as the best fantasy book of all time a lot of times. Because, I mean, Reddit tends to do that with a lot of books, but really with this one, it was like unanimous that everybody loved it. And so I think I had higher expectations, therefore it suffered a lot more. It had really high highs and really low lows. I liked the characters, but the plots... I was more interested in the first plotline of scamming a lord. And then they introduce a thing called the Grey King or the Grey Knight or something. And it just... I lost all interest immediately. Because I really like heist stories, so I was disappointed that, you know, this book was a, you know, A tier, low S. So I have some, I have a lot of S tiers actually coming up soon. I want to spread it out. But, uh, the moment that the Great King was introduced, it dropped all the way to high C. There it goes. I enjoyed it for about 75% of the book, and then the Grey King was introduced, and I lost all interest. That's really all I have to say. It had really high highs, really low lows, and it bounced out into average. So The next book, though, was probably one of my favorite books that I read for Bingo. Maybe my favorite book I've read ever? This was the Bingo Space feminist novel, a novel that deals with uh, feminist themes, marriage, childbirth, um, you know, society norms on gender, you know, all that. So, I finally settled on Sword of Kaigen by M. L. Rang. I don't even know where to start. This was one of the best books ever. All the characters were very well written. All of the themes were very well explored. The story was great. A lot of twists and turns happened throughout. And so, I'm going to put it right up into the S tier. That's, so far, it's been one of the best books ever that I've read. So. I, uh... I'm happy there's no more books in this series because I could easily see how it would become just like one of the worst. It would be a downgrade if there was ever a sequel. This needs to be a one volume novel thing and then move on. So everyone should check this out. It was uh, self-published also. So this is an example of self-publishing going beyond expectations so the next novel bingo space that i did was novel featuring exploration this one i actually had something else for the longest time and then when it came time to do that bingo space i realized that i couldn't get a hold of the original book that i wanted to read i can't remember what it was now but i settled on Another self-published book called Aching God by Mike Shell. This is another one that was really good. I really liked. It was Dungeoneering. It was... It was like a Jason Statham movie where it was like, We gotta bring you back for one last mission. And it's like, I don't want it. It's like, your daughter's involved. And it becomes like this totally awesome story. And all the characters are great. You get... Every character gets a shining moment. So I'm putting this top of the A tier. I really enjoyed this. And it's part of a series, which I... This book ended so well that I'm not really interested in further books. It wrapped up. It wasn't a huge cliffhanger at the end. So I, I, I probably will go on, but such a great standalone already. I don't want to really go on. The next book is any r slash fantasy book club book of the month or at r slash read along book. r slash fantasy read along book. This one I got for free on uh, Kindle Unlimited, I believe. 
And this was sufficiently advanced magic. This is the other side of the whole Cradle series with uh, lit, lit RPG, which is basically novel form of D&D, where stats are a thing. There's a hard science for the magic system, all that. And I really like this book. I wish the book was more about the tower exploring, because it's basically about a mysterious tower that shows up in all these regions. It's like Sword, My Hero, no. What's that sh show called? Sword Art Online. It reminded me of that. But in novel form, and I loved Sword Art Online. Even Season 2, everyone was always shocked. I say I liked season two, but this is basically the novel form of that. You get um, a main character who's trying to, you know, find his brother in the tower who got lost years ago, and he's the main character is a disappointment to the family. Mom's disappeared, and you slowly get introduced to all these great mysteries, and they get solved. Some of them. Don't get solved this book because it's going to be a multi-book series with other series tying in. So I really liked it. I wish I don't know. I I want to go on with this series, but this is a newer series that's come out with only a few books out. So it's ongoing, and as you can see, I started a lot of new series: Richer, Realm of the Elderlings, Stormlight. Mystery, oh not Mystery Science Theater, uh, Memory Sour Thorn, excuse me, Rage of Dragons, all these books are part of series for the most part. So, I put this above Stone of Farewell. See if it, gosh, let's get it over here. Go over here. There it goes. So I put it in between Rage of Dragons and Stone of Feral. Try and keep them big. Ooh. Is everything seeable? Okay, good. So far, no D list books yet, so that's good. I thought about uh, taking out the S and having it be A, B, C, D, F like it was school, but I'm in school right now and I don't want that. Don't even want to think about it. So either way, let's move on to the next bingo square. This one was a novel featuring a ghost, and I went back and forth on this a lot. I settled with Chasing Graves because it was free on Kindle Unlimited, and it was a pretty short book, 400 pages. And it was okay. I really enjoyed the characters. It was a pretty gritty world. It was uh, basically the magic system is that the afterlife went wonky, and people's spirits can no longer move on. To the afterlife and so humans who are still alive enslave ghosts to do the bidding for the rest of their lives because when you die a copper coin falls from your body and your ghost is bound to it so if someone breaks that coin you die so uh, slave masters hold on to that coin and they're like oh you try to go away I'm gonna hold this coin over a fire you'll feel like you're getting burned so the magic system was really interesting in this. The story was interesting, but I hated the ending because it just ended. You're reading the book and they're like, Hey you, what are you doing there? And it's like, bam, action will continue in book two. And I said, nope, that's it for me. Because I hate it when books end like that. I want payoff. So I'm putting this in the C tier. Uh... I would say below Eye of the World. So far the worst book is Flameborn, and I, it wasn't even that bad, it's just... I think it could have used another round of editing. So. The next book was based on a square that I had no idea how to fill, called The Romantic or Paranormal Fantasy, or Romance, I'm sorry. This one I settled with The Vine Witch by Loran Smith. This is on Kindle Unlimited for free, so it was a really short book. It was like 250 pages, maybe at most. And this one's about a uh, a witch who 
is in charge of a vineyard and is trying to keep the pH levels up. It's like a slice of life, like a wine making fantasy book about her. she gets turned into a frog for like 20 years or something. And one day this curse finally breaks and she goes back to the farm and just, you know, many years later and some hot dude has moved in and is uh, in charge of the vineyard but it's not as good as it used to be. So she tries to kick him out and he's like, no, I'm the landowner now and I'm in charge of this. So I enjoyed it. It was a nice light read. There really wasn't much romance, actually. I was kind of shocked by that. It just kind of ended <laughs> and it was like a single kiss like nothing else happened in terms of romance so no one really uh, talked to each other romantically there was no romance so no, I mean, it was fine I'm gonna put that in the uh, I'm gonna put that above uh, Doom I can find their little calendars. So the next book that I read was novel with a number in the title. That's not the novel name, that's the bingo square, I'm sorry. The novel I read was Thousand Orcs by R.A. Salvatore, book 14 of the Legend of Drizzt series. I've never read a Legend of Drizzt book. I saw this at the used bookstore for a dollar and I said sure and I just grabbed it and bought it, and then as I'm driving home, I realized maybe I shouldn't start with book 14. But it's book one of the trilogy. So it it wasn't bad, but this was a really bad place to start for me. I wish I chosen something else. It was just, I feel like I missed out on a lot of context. So it's my fault that the rating is so low for this. But. One day I'll catch up and reread this, maybe, if I forget it. But I had more fun with it than Lies of Loch Lomond, so it was going above that. <laughs> Honestly. Next book, next book bingo square that I finished was the novel translated from its original language. This one, it was The Witcher for the very longest time, and then... I needed, I needed to fill in the short story collection square and I just couldn't find something else for a original language. So I just went on uh, Kindle Unlimited and typed in translated fantasy and the first one that popped up was Stone Will by Kirill Klebanski. This one... This, this is really hyped in Russia, I believe. Everybody in the fantasy community loves it. And there's like 20 books planned, with each book being like 800 pages. But this book was good, but I did some further reading on the series to see like what people thought of it. And apparently after book one, everything gets really... Uh, consistent. It gets really repetitive. So I enjoyed it. I'm gonna just fix this. I really enjoyed it. It's really dark. It's bordering grim dark. There's a whole lot of just awful things that happen in the book which was hard to read about but I mean, it was fine. I'm gonna put it um, let's see. It's hard to put anything above, like, Rhythm of War, because I feel like a bias, because that's my favorite author. But... I'm gonna put this above Lies of Lock and Moore. Okay. Was it better? I'll put it better than uh, Thousand Orcs. So the next bingo space that I did was the Optimistic Sci-Fi and Fantasy. This was a really fun uh, bingo space to do because I was looking on many bingo sheets trying to get inspiration, ideas, all that. So I finally settled on The Goblin Emperor 
by Katherine Addison. I loved this book. And from what I've heard, from what I've heard, each book is just going to be focused on a different character. So each book is going to end very well with a conclusion. And watching our characters slowly get better as a emperor was really interesting. Because he's like the fifth child of a royal family, and he's a goblin. Who... A goblin emperor is unheard of, for the most part. Usually goblin family members are shipped off far away into like a cabin with like one other person make sure they don't leave just in case anything awful happens and something does something awful does happen at the beginning of the book and that his whole family is wiped out and no one thinks it's an accident but no one will investigate so he's tackling all these different like mysteries schemes plots all this different stuff and it ends so well and I'm just, everyone should read this. It's up there with, dramatically do this. With, oh my god. Okay. Everything's gone wonky. Oh my god, it's all. I'm going to put it up there with Sword of Kaigen. There we go. So, I really, really like this book. I'm really excited to see future books in the series. I, uh, the writing was just incredible. I'm really happy I read this. I definitely felt a lot more optimistic. <laughs> it's a very political book, so there's a lot of backstabbing, but, you know, antagonists get their comeuppance throughout the entire book. So, you should definitely read it. <laughs> it's great. So, the third to last being your space was a book that made you laugh. This one is really hard to pre-plan a book that will make you laugh, but I was looking at other Bingo Spaces and a lot of people listed Orkonomics by J. Zachary Pike as a really funny book. So I checked it out and it's a homage to the old, uh, to Dungeoneering like type RPGs like World of Warcraft, Guild Wars, all that. So, it was fun to see all the different characters and watch them uh, work with each other because some of them were like ex-heroes of, you know, great battles and all this stuff and they all have to come together to solve a dungeoneering quest, basically. I really liked it. I laughed a lot throughout this entire book. And why does it do that every time? So I'm just, just going really slow. I'll just do that and then where did it go? It went over here. Did everything get kicked down? What happened? Okay, I don't know, but I'm gonna zoom out. Oh gosh, you can see it. Ugh. So the next, uh, second to last book that I read, I cheated on. I'll just go ahead and say I was looking for the original. This is a novel with a magical pet. I went the manga route because I wanted to read Kiki's Delivery Service because it's one of my favorite movies. But I couldn't get a copy of the book and this was like last month that I was working on this these final uh Bingo Squares, and finally I just, you know, I got lazy and I just looked up knockoffs on Kindle Unlimited of Kiki's Delivery Service. So, I settled on The Flying Witch by Chihiro Ishizuka, which is a manga that's basically Kiki's d Delivery Service, but it's not as wholesome and awesome. It's, it's a knockoff, so it was fine. I enjoyed it, but... There's a cute cat who does like a single spell in the volume that I read. That's about 80 pages. So, check it out if you want. I'll, I'll put it above Flameborn. And the final bingo space that I did 
is going to be a very easy one to predict. It's the novel featuring necromancy. Everyone chose getting in the ninth, and I had to do so too, because I had a lot of interest in the series and the books. And the tagline at the front reeled me in and wouldn't let me go. So I finally got me a copy, and I started reading it, and it is Getting in the Ninth by Thames and Mia. I have a review already, but I'll sum up basically what I said in there. It's amazing. I love it. One of the best books I've read. It's a queer fantasy book. It's a genre that I have not many experiences with, and I'm trying to fill in that blind spot in the fantasy genre. And this is an amazing book. I It's up the... I think I rate it just below Goblin Emperor. So, I loved it. Watch the review that I put up on Wednesday to see my full thoughts on that book. Anyways, that's it for my tier list. I read a lot of books for Bingo. I read about double these books last year. So, I may do a reflection on 2020 in my books that I read, but... A lot of it are rereads because Stormlight 4 was coming out. Rhythm of War. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun doing the book bingo. I don't think I'll be doing it next year because I have, because of this book bingo from last year, I started a lot of new series. So, I need to finish a lot of them. So, hope you like this video. Leave a like. Don't forget to follow, share, all that. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you.